All right, Algebra 1A folks, this is test 3 review. Welcome back or welcome depending on where you started. Um, we're doing questions number 15 through 29 here. So for number 15, it says 6 times the quantity, or 6 equals, if I can get the right color, 6 equals 2 times the quantity x plus 8 minus 5x. So I'm going to draw my line here. I'm going to put a 1 there just to remind myself. You may not need it, but you know, choose your own adventure. 2 times 1x is 2x. 2 times 8 is 16 minus 5x. Those are my like terms. 2 minus 5 is negative 3x. Me, friend, friend to friend. So I'm going to do the opposite of plus 16, which is, of course, minus 16. And I do negative 3x comes down. These cancel. 6 minus 16 gives you negative 10. So I need to divide by negative 3 on both sides. And 10 divided by negative 3, or negative 10 divided by negative 3, will actually give you 10 thirds or 3 and 1 third. If you don't get that answer in your calculator, which I'm assuming is how you're doing it, um, remember on the blue calculators at least, you have the ABC to DE button that should be more than helpful uh, to get the answer for number 15, which is of course D. Now, number 16, similar thing, it just happens to have a decimal in it, so don't freak out. It's not like it's a huge deal that you can't do. So 0.5x plus 4 is equal to 31. Draw your line. Me, friend, friend of friend. The opposite of plus 4 is minus 4. So I end up with uh, 27 here. These canceled out, 0.5x. To get rid of 0.5x, I need to time. This is multiply, so I need to divide. By the way, 0.5 is just half, so. And dividing by half is the same as multiplying by 2. So if I did 27 divided by 0.5, the answer that I'm going to end up with is positive. 54. So the answer to number 16 is A. The next one I'm going to do is number 17, obviously. Uh, very similar problem to the last one. The only difference is this one doesn't even have a decimal in it. And I'm going to do it over here just to do something different. Uh, the relationship for this one, plus 24, the opposite is minus 24. Uh, negative 9 minus negative 24 is negative 33. And you end up with 3x equals negative 33. This is multiply, so I need to divide. So your answer is actually the one I just covered up, which is a x is equal to negative 11. So not really that difficult. I don't know why I wrote over the problem that was the answer. I could have just looked at the key to see it was going to be there, but that's not how I do things. Anyway, uh, number uh, 18 now. This is one of the x on both sides. It's a real simple x on both sides questions, or variable on both sides. I can move the x or the 2x. I tend to move everything to the left. Uh, minus 2x. Those go away. 1 minus 2 is negative 1x. I need to subtract 5 from both sides. This gives you negative 10. These cancel. I need to divide by negative 1 on both sides, so I end up with x is equal to 10. So my answer to number 18 is a. There's like a little uh, row of a's there, all nicely organized for you. Uh, the next one, c, or 19, sorry. I think I'm giving the answer away by saying c, but I may be wrong. 34 is equal to negative 2 times the quantity m plus 7 plus an m. Now I'm going to put 1's in front so it's easier for me to see. Draw my line. Negative 2 times 1 is negative 2m. Negative 2 times 7 is negative 14 plus 1m. Now these are on the same side so I'm going to use whatever operation it already says. It says negative 2 plus 1 and I've got no reason to dispute what it's doing so I'm just going to combine them the way that it says me, friend, friend to friend. To get rid of minus 14, I need to add 48 divided by over time equals negative 1m. Sheesh. This shows a multiply situation, so I need to divide by negative 1. So my final answer is m is equal to negative 48, which is, of course, 
C. Like I said, I was probably giving you the answer, uh, not knowingly, but that's just kind of how it works sometimes. For the next one, I'm going to do number 20. I'm actually going to roll up a whole bunch, hopefully, so I can get a lot done at one time. I got three of them. Nice page break thing there. But the good news is it gives me a lot of room to work. So I end up with negative one half m minus seven is equal to three. Draw my line. Me, friend, friend of friend. Minus seven, to get rid of, I need to add seven. So I get negative one half m is equal to three plus seven, or ten. That's the worst seven I've ever drawn. Um, so you're witnessing history. Now, this says times. Even though it's got that fraction thing in it, the fraction is in front of the letter, which means they're touching, which means multiply. So to get rid of it, I need to divide. 10 divided by negative 1 half. And really, like I said before, when you divide by uh, a fraction, it usually means you flip the fraction and multiply. So 10 times 2 is 20. And since it's negative, my answer is going to be negative 20 for 20. What a weird answer. Uh, so. The answer for number 20 is B. Remember, you can just type this in, 10 divided by negative 1 half. And if it had been M over 2, then you could do times 2 on each side. I mean, the result was the same anyway. But if you have a fraction in front of a number, or a fraction in front of a variable, my suggestion is you treat it like multiply, and then just divide by the fraction. Looks a little weird, I know, but it'll often give you the right answer. And since you're using a calculator on this part of the test, you can get the answer correct. Now, number 21, x plus 9 is equal to 5 times the quantity 4x minus 2. Draw my line here. I need to do the distributive property. Now, I've got an x term on both sides. I'm going to put a 1 there to see it. I'm going to move to the right this time just because I never do it. So I haven't done it so far this video anyway. So I'm going to get rid of plus 1x, I need to subtract 1. So these cancel. I'm going to bring down my 9. 20 minus 1 is 19x. And then I need to bring down negative 10. Me, friend, friend to friend, to get rid of minus 10, I need to add 10. Nineteen is equal to nineteen x. This shows multiply. I need to divide. So my final answer is equal to x equals one. And number twenty one is C. It's the one you can't see because I covered it. But it says one underneath, just in case you were wondering. Number twenty two is nine uh, forty four a solution to the equation y equals five x. Now in middle school and probably early, late elementary school, you should know that 944 is a coordinate point. So if I had a graph, I'd be going over 9 and up 44, so it'd probably be somewhere, you know, in this general area. But it has an x component and a y component to make a coordinate. I've got an x and a y. When you put them in the coordinate point there, it uh, puts them alphabetically, so that's very convenient. All they want you to do is if I plug in the x and y here, does it make a statement that's true? Math is about finding truth anyway, right? So y equals 5x, what they want you to do is take the x value that you're given and just plug it in for y, or for plug it in for x, the variable here. This says times, so I need to do 5 times 9. I'm going to use a parentheses just because it tends to make it right more often. Uh, and my y value is 44. Now, 5 times 9 is 45. They want to know if that's the truth or not. Is 44 the same as 45? And obviously it's not. So my answer is B. No, it's not a solution. If it had been the same answer, then yes, it would have been a solution. They're looking for plugging in one, getting the other, that kind of thing. The next question, number 23, says, is the equation true, false, or open? And then they even say explain, but they give you all the possible explanations. That's the problem with this type of question when you have um, multiple choice you'll notice that it has variables in it. If it has a variable in it, this could be true in some situations, and then it could be false in others. But we don't have to know any of that. Anytime you see a variable, it's always open. Because it could be one or the other, we just don't know. Uh, the next one says, what's the simplified form of expression? Basically, they want you to do um, the distributive property. So they want you to do 1 half times negative 46, which would be negative 23 m, and then they want you to do 1 half times 14, and you get 
7. So 23, sorry. That's terrible looking. Negative 23m plus 7. And you see I actually wrote it next to the answer. So the answer to number 24 is B. 25, they want you to combine like terms. My R squared terms are alike. My H, I'm going to put a line on top. So in this case, I need to do 7.5 plus 9.1 because I'm combining my R squared terms together. And I end up with 16.6 R squared. Then I do 1.2 minus 8.2, which is six or negative 7, incidentally enough, and then minus 3.9 because all of those are like terms and end up with negative 10.9. So my answer for H, sorry, negative 10.9 H. Uh, so my answer for this one is C for number 25. Uh, number 26 is another distributive property question. You'll notice that the negative 2 is in the parentheses, but it's touching. The parentheses are touching. means multiply. So I do, it's kind of like backwards from what you're used to seeing, most likely. Negative 2 times negative 5 is positive 10. Negative 2 times negative 7 is plus 14c. So my answer for this one is this. Now look at the answer choices. You'll notice that they're all the same numbers. It's just about signs. They're trying to see if they could trick you. Remember, if it's negative times negative, it's positive. If it's uh, positive times positive, it's positive. Negative times positive is negative. Just make sure that you get your signs in order to get that question correct. Not super difficult concept, but, you know, it's there. 27 and 28 are kind of like almost freebies. I just wanted to give you some that you could get right very quickly. These are one-step equations. G is divided by 4. To get rid of divide by 4, I need to multiply by 4 on both sides. Uh, so that would be G is equal to negative 5 times 4, which is negative 20. So the answer to number 27 is A. Number 28, you need to do, uh, to get rid of minus 4, of course, you add 4. And you end up with Y is equal to positive 2. So the answer to number 28 is B. And the last one on this video before I split it off into another one. Um, this one is kind of long. It's one of the bigger ones that you have, or types of bigger ones that you'll have on the test. P minus 1 minus 2 times 7 minus 2P. So I need to draw my line. Then I need to put some 1s in here just for my own sake, just one of them. 5 times 1P is 5P. 5 times negative 1 is negative 5. Negative 2 times 7 is negative 14. Negative 2 times negative 2 is plus 4p. Go back at this point and check your signs. Positive, positive, positive. Positive, negative, negative. Negative, positive, negative. Negative, negative, positive. It gave you all opportunities there, by the way. Bring this down. I didn't use it. Here's my like term information. 5 plus 4. They're on the same side, so I need to just combine them the way they tell me to. Uh, these are on the same side, so I do negative 5 minus 14, which is negative 19. From here, I'm going to move the p values together. I'm going to get rid of plus 3p. Now, this minus just tells me the relationship, not anything else about the p, so I need to subtract 3p here. Negative 1, uh, 6p minus 19. To get rid of minus 19, I need to add it. 18, divide by 6 on both sides, p is equal to 3. So the answer to number 29 is C. And that's it for this section, a little bit longer section just because the problems are longer, but uh, not super difficult, and I think that you can do it. Uh, thanks for watching, whatnot, and so on.